As Heritage Month comes to a close, we take a look now at the suggestion by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi that BRICS countries, which South Africa is a part of, need to set up a traditional medicines repository. South Africa is already doing some work in that space where traditional medicines are concerned in making them accessible not just to South Africans, uh, but to the international market as well. We welcome Professor David Katerere, a researcher at the Tswane University. University of Technology to tell us about some of the work that is being done and so uh, thank you very much Prof for your time this afternoon. It would appear that uh, Narendra Modi's uh, suggestion of um, a traditional medicines repository uh, is something that South Africa is already working on because you've introduced the Niselo. Please introduce that or tell our viewers what that is about. Okay thanks Dudu and it's good to be here again. So I think it's important, first of all, to understand that traditional med medicines are really just one part of what we would call, you know, um, <laughs> a traditional way of life, right? So if you look at, um, you know, what is traditional, you, you can talk about governance systems. You can also talk about uh, diets, right? Um, and in a lot of African traditional uh, health practices, we don't distinguish between a medicine and a food. So I'll give you an example of say Leroto, uh, which is black jack or maybe Msuzungwane, something like um, Lipia Javonica, that these things would be taken as teas on a normal basis, but they're also very useful as treatments for diabetes uh, or hypertension. So that's really what we looked at and we said, okay, what are the indigenous foods that serve both as medicine and also as as a as a food, um, and that's actually very very important. That when people talk about using traditional medicines, they should go beyond just well, I'm going to a stangoma. But what is it? Are you eating healthy? Are you eating indigenous foods, which generally tend to be, um, you know, very good? So in the case of sorghum, which is what we put into niselo, it is gluten free. And, you know, so everybody is going gaga about gluten-free products right now. Um, it also tends to be quite high in energy and high in protein and, and iron. So it has all these uh, vitamin and minerals in there. And then what we've done is used ancient technologies on an ancient grain. So uh, fermentation is one of the most ancient technologies actually known to men, and it comes out of Africa to a large extent. So our product, this Nicello, is actually fermented uh, sorghum with probiotics. Mm. And that's why we are able to, to make um, quite a lot of claims around its healthful properties. I would like for us to expand on what you just said in terms of claims around um, its um, herbal or healing properties. So when you take a look at this here continent, um, you've got or rather the question being help us understand the intersection between indigenous knowledge systems and indig indigenous medicines and science because it could be very well argued in some parts of the continent whether you go to central west east south north africa that there has already been a science that existed when it comes to the space of medicines yeah and you cannot deny that right because ancient men wherever they were across the world, when they needed uh, food, they used the uh, useful plants around them. So they were then able to see what was poisonous from what is not poisonous. When they needed medicines, they were also able to experiment. It's just that they were not in a lab or wearing lab coats as we would you know, do these days. But yes, there, there was a, a, and there is a scientific method to traditional medicine. And that's why it's actually such an important thing. Um, and maybe just to say, um, in thinking about mainstreaming it, are we even thinking about how does it play into the NHI, for instance? You know, because when the when the Indian Prime Minister talks about um, uh, codifying it, you know, that's been done quite a bit in India, and they've actually mainstreamed it. Whereas um, in South Africa, for instance, it's not a conversation we're having. Um, whereas if you look at the role that traditional healers play, say, in mental health, um, even traditional birth attendants in uh, birthing of, of pregnant mothers, then we need to think about how we can locate them 
in this, uh, what we might call the modern practice of medicine. Hmm. What has been the resistance to making it a reality? You speak of India. China um, is already, I mean, China also can be compared to India. They on the same level, if not even more. And so what is the resistance when it comes to South Africa? Why have you not codified it? Um, well, I guess it's a colonial history, right? Remember that when um, the colonial masters came into any environment, even in India, they really tried to destroy those things that uh, were of those people. You know, so I think we are still uh, suffering from that um, colonial hangover of uh, choosing between what is uh, Western, if you like, or so-called modern versus what is actually useful for us. Um, so I could ask you, for instance, you know, do you eat um, brown pup, you know, which is sorghum pup? Uh, and, and most people don't, you know, they will eat white pup. And yet we know that sorghum mm -hmm. pup um, is healthier, right? Do you mm -hmm. eat uh, masonja? Um, and we've mm -hmm. done experiments where we find that masonja have 65% protein, right? But because maybe they are not packaged in a way that is um, acceptable to a modern demographic, then that's a problem, and which, which is why Nicello then comes in, because with Nicello, as I've given you the background, we have now modernized um, Maheu and also given them uh, health attributes and, and made them, uh, you know, uh, ready food on the go kind of thing. Mm. Okay. Uh, so with the research that you are doing, are you taking a look at specific um, ailments so, uh, or conditions, um, epilepsy, for instance, um, women during pregnancy or women who could miscarry um, and what happens after that. And so what is it that you are looking at specifically and what is informed by what you look at? Yeah, okay. So um, sometimes the funda informs what we have to look at. But one of the important areas that we work on a lot is, is diabetes. Because diabetes is that one disease which can be managed by, by good nutrition and um, exercise, among other things. And people can actually come off medicines as a result of that. So this product we've developed has a, a low glycemic index, which means that it actually helps the body to absorb uh, nutrients slowly and also to absorb sugar slowly. So it, it does help in management of of diabetes and also pre-diabetes. So, so things like, um, you know, putting on a bit too much weight, those are things that we have to look at. We also work with traditional healers. So we have a project funded by the South African Medical Research Council, which is looking at uh, an HIV supplement, and that's uh, coming from a traditional healer. Um, and then, of course, you may know that we, we also run the Cannabis Research Hub, the TUTCSR Cannabis Research Hub, where we are now also looking at um, the use of cannabis as medicine and cannabis as a health supplement. Prof, you mentioned that funders inform the kind of research or what areas you look at. Um, what does that speak to? Well, like they say, you know, he who pays a, um, the piper, you know, asks for the tune, right? So if we don't have enough funding locally, right, which is prioritizing our own um, a, a research such as this, this, which is important for local needs, then we will continue to do research which is not really relevant to our needs, right? And that's why it's important. Uh, um, you know, the, the, the Department of Science and Innovation has actually been um, quite a good funder in this area. And now we see um, Technology Innovation Agency, TIA, as well as the MRC coming to the party. But in this space of uh, medicine development, we also need um, the regulators like SAPRA, you know, to come around and be able to sit with researchers, right, and be able to come up with guidelines. Because one of the things is a lot of research is done, but it doesn't move into clinical testing for various reasons. Some of them being that there just isn't enough guidance, maybe from, from the regulator, but also it's a very expensive part of the medicine value chain. So that needs quite a lot of funding going into that. Sure. Just finally for us, Prof, um, just in terms of mindsets, you, you
touched on it a little bit earlier on in terms of um, why there's still resistance when it comes uh, to traditional medicines being codified, etc. But when you take a look at the market, just from the research that you do, those who use um, indigenous medicines will they use indigenous medicines and there's a market that is enjoying that um, when you speak of making it for the masses from your research what is it that attracts um, some Africans to let's say Chinese uh, traditional medicines uh, where people will tell you if you get that herbal tea from China or if you get that root plant for your hairline from China it will come back what is it that the Chinese did in terms of shifting those mindsets Mindsets. Uh, well, they don't have a deep colonial history such as our kind of history. I mean, we are speaking a, a, a colonial language, whereas Chinese um, don't do that, right? So that's that's a one thing. Um, but also, I think they've been very intentional in developing this sector, right? Because if you go to China, you will go to a hospital and you'll have you'll have a choice between whether you take the traditional Chinese healing mortality or you take, um, you know, so-called conventional medicine. So I think that's what we ought to do as well. The interesting thing is, uh, you know, when I've spoken to some Chinese colleagues, they are very interested in getting medicines out of, uh, or foods, by the way, new uh, ingredients out of Africa. Because, you know, Africa is extremely diverse in what it can offer to the mm -hmm. world. I think what we just need to, to be able to do is to be intentional, and that's part of the research that we are doing, to identify you know, high-value commodities, uh, bring them onto the market. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but the important thing is we are learning how to commercialize products. And at the same time, we are also making a difference you know, to people's lives. Um, to be intentional. Thank you very much, Prof, for your time. Professor David Katerere, Tswana University of Technology Researcher.